in Charlotte. Now, we're going to expose all the nasty rhetoric that flowed from behind the podium. And while the mainstream media sleeps, we're going to tell you what you didn't hear from any of the speakers. And we'll tell you the truth about the economy tonight, the truth about the bin Laden raid tonight. And we will lay out the untold story of the GM bailout. And we will also reveal what the 2012 DNC will really be remembered for. And by the way, no, it's not Bill Clinton. Now, this is an investigation you will only see tonight right here on Hannity, and we begin with an in-depth look into President Obama's acceptance speech. It was an address that was filled with a laundry list of new promises. Let's uh, show you a recap. If we choose this path, we can create a million new manufacturing jobs in the next four years. If you choose this path, we can cut our oil imports in half by 2020 and support more than 600,000 new jobs in natural gas alone. Yes, my plan will continue to reduce the carbon pollution that is heating our planet. I will use the money we're no longer spending on war to pay down our debt and put more people back to work. My plan would cut our deficit by $4 trillion. Now, if the past three and a half years are any indication, what you just heard would be part of a list of broken promises. And the question is, should he win another term? After all, Mr. President, you have failed to make good on your word countless times. And so before you start promising us the world yet again, you may want to work on a few of these old pledges. No family making less than $250,000 a year will see any form of tax increase. Today, I'm pledging to cut the deficit we inherited by half by the end of my first term in office. We'll have the negotiations televised on C-SPAN so that people can see who is making arguments on behalf of their constituents. Guantanamo will be closed uh, no later than one year from now. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this presidency. If you choose change, you will have a nominee who doesn't take a dime from Washington lobbyists, doesn't take a dime from Washington PACs. And when I am president, their days of setting the agenda in Washington will be over. Now, of course, those broken promises were conveniently left out of last night's speech. And interestingly enough, also absent from his remarks were some of his biggest so-called accomplishments. Now, not once last night did he talk about Obamacare by name, and he didn't even mention his stimulus plan. No, he's not campaigning on these so-called achievements. Well, he's running away from them. And that's because he wants you to forget about his failures and the price tag that they come along with and once again believe the hype, the hope, the change, Obama, change, change, change. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen this time around. Joining me now to expose the truth behind the Democratic convention is former Alaska governor, Fox News contributor Sarah Palin. Governor, so many broken promises. The media in this country ignores them, and he just comes up with a, a cut-paste, you know, speech again last night with a whole new laundry list of promises. It, it seems like we've got to focus on the old ones first, don't we? Well, we do, and those repeated promises, and then as you are suggesting, that a whole host of new promises um, really is a, a slap in the face of uh, the electorate. It, th there's an estimation of uh, an unintelligent voting block out there. I think that uh, uh, President Obama is assuming will continue to want to get free stuff, despite free stuff will replace freedom, and he's just assuming that that voting block will be large enough to get him back in there. But I just pray that Americans will open their eyes between now and November when uh, they know that they'll have to make that choice between free stuff or freedom. You can't have both. Governor, I, I watched last night, watched really closely, watched all the speeches, as a matter of fact, during the, this convention. Boring, stale, um, uninspiring, out of ideas. I, I, I just didn't feel it this time. Um, and I knew in 2008 something huge was happening. I mean, them moving it inside, the weather was perfect, that was part of it. You know, what are the adjectives, adjectives that you use? Uh, well, last night it was very painful to watch the president's speech, and, and that not just because we knew that he was not telling Americans the truth with his suggestions of how well things were going and how well things will go if we gave him four more years of these repeated failed policies. But you're right, there was a lack of enthusiasm, a lack of passion for this country, a lack of sincerity when it came to, for instance, his claims of supporting our troops. And yet many of us look back just a number of months ago and remember a specific about uh, the troops, for instance, 
where he was ready and willing to throw our troops under the bus if he didn't get his way on budgets and debt ceiling increases. He was going to withhold or was willing to the troops' paychecks. So as he talked about the support that he has for, again, for instance, the troops, all you have to do is go back in, in time in the very recent past and realize that he contradicts himself. He really is uh, the antithesis of consistency that you would hope would be in a president. And we're going to get into this in great detail tonight. The truth about the bin Laden raid, it wouldn't have happened. If, he, if his policies that he supported had been implemented on EIT, Gitmo, Rendition, uh, same with GM, how much they still owe the taxpayers. We'll get into those details tonight. Uh, and some more details about, I think, the, the single thing this convention may be remembered for is, are the delegates. You know, they removed God and Jerusalem as the capital of Israel from the platform, and you hear, I, I, don't, I can't remember a convention where they booed God. Or said no to God in the know, convention. I know. Uh, I'm like, what no, was that? No, it was the equivalent. It was the equivalent of uh, thrice uh, denying our Lord. And uh, we, you know, go back into New Testament teachings on on what happened then. But, God, but uh, crowed, uh, I, I thought crowed that, three times, I guess, before before yeah, uh, the right. uh, it, L.A. mayor said, "I don't care what you say. We're going to do what we want anyway." And Sean, to want to discard God from what a platform is, is a list of your priorities, what's most important to you collectively as a political body for what seemed to be the majority of the delegates wanting God out of there, um, I thought was uh, yeah. uh, quite I disrespectful of, of other good Democrats who are out there who have that faith, who, who um, understand God-given rights and aren't ashamed of proclaiming that well, it is God who gives us our rights. I think it showed the, the, the views of a few in the hall, and I think they were reaching out to energize their base. Uh, but the other thing about this convention that strikes me, and I want to get your thoughts on this, is that, you know, Bill Clinton, who said that Obama played the race card on him, was brought in to save the day. Um, interestingly, the Romney campaign has come out with an ad reminding us what Clinton said about Obama in 2008. Let's roll this. As the economy gets worse, Barack Obama calls on Bill Clinton to help his failing campaign. It's about which candidate is more likely to return us to full employment. He's a good soldier, helping his party's president. But what did Bill Clinton say about Barack Obama in 2008? Give me a break. This whole thing is the biggest fairy tale I've ever seen. 23 million Americans struggling for work. A middle class falling further behind. Give me a break. I met Romney and I approved this message. Is that a good lawyer defending a guilty client, Governor? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And uh, here Obama is still sprinkling that fairy dust in this fairy tale that he wants Americans to buy again for another four years. And thanks, Governor. And coming up tonight. All those delegates opposed say no.